As architects and designers, our value is in our storytelling ability. And thankfully, Chaos has put together the best photorealism rendering software on the market. It's called Chaos Envision. If you haven't heard of it yet, that's okay, because it's still in its beta form and it's about to take over our world as we know it. Envision allows you to combine multiple different rendering files into the one single software, providing a better collaborative experience for all. Today, I wanna to show you exactly how you can master Envision in less than 15 minutes. This is the home screen for Chaos Envision. So many great new features in front of us, but let's get started. First of all, the home screen is basically a generic introduction. You'll see your main toolbars up the top here under item one, all your lights and scatters on item two, loading progress got bars in four, controls for interactive frames per second, fidelity and resolution scales in the right, etc. You guys know how to read, so we can skip through all of this. The same goes for the next three pages, and then we click OK, let's get into it. So for the purpose of this, we're going to be using a demonstration scene from Chaos and Vision. So let's go File, Open, and I'm going to open up my building scene. In a couple of seconds, it'll convert the V-Ray file. Yes, you heard me right, the V-Ray file. Chaos Envision's most powerful features are the fact that you can import multiple programs into the one space. So instead of working on Enscape, doing one file there, rendering that out, then doing something different in V-Ray, you can do that all now in one space thanks to Envision. If it's the first time you've opened up Envision, you're not gonna have any idea what to do. If you start to zoom in and out, you'll see our camera view is locked. Let's quickly unlock that in the bottom right hand corner so we can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. The right click button is gonna let us pan around and the left click button, like everything else in life, is gonna let us select. If we don't wanna select, simply hit the escape button and we'll get out of anything that's selected. Now, for all of you that are familiar with Enscape, Vantage, V-Ray, and any of those other 3D rendering software, then you're gonna love Chaos and Vision. By holding down the right click button on your mouse and using the W, D, and A keys, we can move around like a human. Using the Q and the E keys, we can go up and down. So simply panning around, looking around at our scene, we can see a lot is going on straight away. If it seems intimidating and overwhelming with all of these lights and gizmos flying around, you can quickly just tap the G button on your keyboard and it will completely disappear out of view so you can see the scene exactly as you would. If you don't like those shortcuts, just come up to the top in view, scroll down and you'll see toggle light gizmos visibility and you can toggle that on and off. Now, like I was saying a minute ago, the power of Envision is about combining all of your workflows into one. And better yet, it's about combining them and then adding on. Having the ability to change, edit, adjust, all in the one space, regardless of where these files come from. So speaking of, let's go File, Import, Link, and let's link the context of this scene. So that context will quickly load if I scroll out you'll see all of these buildings have loaded around that main space. In the bottom left-hand corner of our screen, we're gonna see our objects and our lights panel. As you can see, we have our building and we have our context. So we just loaded our context in, and if we wanted to toggle it on and off, we really could very quickly. If we didn't need that context, or we wanted to speed up our project, we would be able to toggle it on and off. One of the best things about Envision is they're claiming that you can add all of these multiple files and it will not slow your project down. So linking them all in, using multiple files, building massive, massive scenes is going to be able to be rendered out in record time. Last but not least, we want to link one more file. So back to file, import link, and we want to link our train scene. You'll see in the middle, that a train scene has now been created. So if we hold down our shift button, our A button, and right click, we can fly around to find the perfect view of this train scene. In a matter of seconds, we've been able to link three different files directly into the software without any glitches, without any delays in performance. Overall, a phenomenal experience. I'll jump in the middle of this tutorial just to let you know that there is a Chaos Envision beta download link in the description down below. If you haven't already got yours, make sure you download it right now. Now, let's say we wanna take our first render. That's really easy in Chaos Envision because that's not what Envision's built for. Envision is built for really high-end videos and it gives us so much flexibility. But having said that, it makes rendering images ridiculously easy. So let me walk you through it for the first time. Let's say we've flown down, we've created our camera scene. We're looking at this sports car on the right, the buildings in the background, the setting sun, it looks epic. But there's a few things wrong with the scene and we haven't even set up our first scene yet at all. So what are we gonna do? Well, 
First up the top, we have our variations in our cameras. So let's switch over to cameras and hit the plus button to create a new scene. If you're an organized person like me, you double tap and rename that scene. So let's just go car render. And now we can jump from scene to scene and quickly revert back to our main image. What I was saying before is we've imported all these files from different programs, but we also have the freedom to edit it. So this car right now is floating. You can see the wheels are off the ground. I hit escape, we deselect it, and the wheels are just floating. So we select our car, we go up to the top to our move tool, or we can hit the W button on our keyboard, and we can simply drag and drop that car down to the road. And now it is perfectly aligned. Better yet, let's adjust the materials. So we've selected the paint of the car and straight away we have our enhancement panel. I don't need that to show off anymore, so I've got it. All good, thanks Chaos. But on the right hand side in this new panel, we have our base color, which is this really nice metallic gray. Let's say we wanted a turquoise blue instead. We simply adjust the base color, change around, and it will update in real time. If for whatever reason your renders are looking a little bit pixelated as you're updating real time, you can come up to the top to resolution. Now I've got my resolution set at 100 because this PC is able to handle quite a lot. But if your program is starting to look something like this, extremely burly, really struggling, not seeing what's going on, probably because your resolution and display control settings are too low. So simply click on that, scale it back up, and we'll be able to see the best that Chaos Envision has to offer. Just like any other rendering software that we're so familiar with, like Enscape and Vantage, we can go ahead and adjust our roughness and metallicness and a few other bits and pieces for this particular paint color. So if I drop my roughness down, I increase my metallicness, we'll see things slowly adjust or increase my roughness a little bit more and it goes a different color. If I wanted to change this black rough down the bottom to more of a black gloss, really simple. We're able to do that in a matter of seconds. Now. Once we're done with the color picker, we're done adjusting bits and pieces. Maybe we just simply can't get this glass to work. Well, then we can open the material library down below by simply clicking the circle with a small little notch, which is our materials. The next panel over, we'll get into a little bit later, but that's our Cosmos library with all of our objects directly available to us. Now, just like every other rendering software, we can scroll through, look for the best material, or we can just simply type in glass see what glass is available to us, and then drag and drop it over the existing glass that we want to change. If, for example, the mirrors in the background weren't enough, we could drag and drop our glass into this background scene of this building so that now we have the beautiful reflection of the car in the background. Now, it's mirrored glass. It's not slightly reflective, but it allows us to really create an incredible scene. If we wanted to go ahead and add a few more objects in, we move to the Chaos Library. It is simply the half-eaten cookie over here on the right-hand side, and we have all of our assets through filters. So if we're looking for 3D models, let's say we want to add a person, we can look for single, standing, walking, etc. Potentially some vegetation, maybe some architecture, or even some accessories. Whatever we're looking for, we can find it through the 3D filter, or we can search, same way as before. Let's say we're just looking for a single person. This guy on the bike looks like a great addition to our render scene, so I'll quickly download that drag and drop him into our background. Now, Chaos and Vision is really good at predicting where we want people placed, but for whatever reason, if it isn't up the top, you'll see our move, our rotate, and our scale bars. Maybe even a little bit more forward over here into the scene so he's in the light and stands out, becomes our main focal point with the car in the background. In a matter of minutes, we've created an awesome scene and we've learned a lot with Chaos and Vision. We've drag and dropped in objects, we've changed materials, we've set up our viewpoints, so what's left? Well, we could go ahead, add in some vegetation, potentially a tree of some sort, just into the corner of our scene, and we get some incredible texture thrown in. We get the shadows on the ground automatically update, and everything in between. Really, there's nothing left except for render and export. Now, like I said, Chaos and Vision is incredible. It is designed to make some awesome animations and is designed to bring your workflow into one space. But better yet, it makes rendering images ridiculously easy. We simply come up to the top, render, render image, and type in a few different settings. This is pretty much pre-done for us. Preset, we go to the maximum. Quality, ultra. Samples, I'm happy with 64 for the purpose of this. Denoiser, let's keep that on. File format type, PNG is perfectly fine for me. And let's go ahead and drag and drop that into our downloads and press save. Then hit the start button to let it export. And in a matter of seconds, we'll see that image rendered out. Now let's open up that image, go full screen and take a look at the quality. That render took maybe 15 seconds to export on this desktop and did a phenomenal job.
Chaos Envision has not only made it super easy to render out premium architectural renders, but it's made it super quick as well. This image is by far one of the highest quality exports you can get with the lowest input on any rendering software. So let's move back to Chaos Envision and take a look what else this incredible software can do. As you can see, we've created this cool scene, awesome, but we wanna do some more. Let's go to our animation panel, drag our car render into our scene at the bottom. You'll see it's a four second render scene. Now, we can have four seconds, we can do a whole bunch of cool stuff, but let's have a play. Now, the concept is the same for everything moving forward. In this four second clip, I'm gonna teach you some incredible stuff and show you the true power of what Chaos Envision has to offer. First of all, up at the top, we have our environment, which we haven't talked about at all. We haven't played with it, we haven't touched it, but there's so much to go into here. The environment has sun and sky options. Our sky can be automatic, which means generated within the software, or it can be a HDRI sky that we've imported ourselves. For the purpose of this, let's stay on automatic and let's just change to a different render view. Now that we're looking at the train and the buildings and the sky in the background, back at our environment and sky tab, we can play with our density of our clouds. So you'll see they become thicker or thinner. We can play with the variety of the clouds, how they look, etc. moving all the way down. Each one is a very simple slider that allows us to fine tune the sky exactly how we like. And if the slider is driving you nuts, simply click, type, and press enter and everything will be done for you. The wind animation and the wind intensity also helps to create a more lifelike scene and there's simply a toggle switch on and off. One thing that I dislike at the moment is for some reason the cloud settings is here but then in the sun the cloud shadows is here. So to me personally the cloud shadows should be under the clouds toggle tab it should all be aligned but maybe they'll fix that in a future update. For now just be mindful that the sun settings to turning on clouds is in sky but changing and adjusting the shadows is in the sun for whatever reason i guess it makes sense sun shadows but moving on if you do want to get real specific about your sun and sky settings you can turn on geometry adjust your latitude longitude your daytime year and have the perfect scene set up that's specific to your location for me in this scenario it doesn't really matter so i'm just going to toggle geolocation back off let's move back to our car render view drag and drop that back into our timeline and walk you through how we can adjust the first scene. So with the slider at zero, zero, that's where our scene's starting. That's where our first keyframe is. Keyframe being this tiny little blue triangle. If I press play, the timeline goes across and nothing happens, but I kind of want it to move. I kind of want it to do something. How do I do that? Well, easy. All we need to do is actually move our camera forward. So if we start flying in to the man over here, whilst our timeline is at four seconds it will automatically create that new keystroke and now if i zoom back on my timeline back and forward you'll see we're adjusting from our original place to the man pressing play we're coming closer obviously if that's too quick for you you simply drag out that timeline click on that key and drag it to where you want it to be pulling back and now we're doing the same scene a little bit slower. If for whatever reason you really like that panning look, but you wanted to keep your attention and focus on this car, up the top, you could simply go to look, click on the car, press OK, and it would follow that same camera directional path whilst making this awesome scene of the car. If you didn't want to look at the car anymore, you just simply hit that X button. The camera scene goes back to the original path that we created and away we go. Now, if we wanted to animate these humans, animate these cars, we can go into all of that as an advanced tutorial on Chaos and Vision. If you want that, please let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, we'll stick to the basics, getting you into this software, getting you up and running in a matter of minutes. Now that we have that scene created, we have that camera movement created, we're pretty much done with the basic intro of Chaos and Vision. But if you want to take it a step further without diving too deep, well, we have had nerd settings here on the right. Of course, we have our field of vision, our camera length, our exposure, depth of field, and our color corrections. So if you wanted to become a little bit more artistic, a little bit more moody, or create a very unique scene that's perfectly tailored to you, well then we can adjust that here. For example, our focal length. If we wanted a 100 meter, millimeter focal length, directly looking at this man, really zooming in all the way, well, we go ahead and create that straight away. If we wanted to create a depth of field with an aperture distance and a focal bokeh we can go ahead and pop that in let's go 20 meters and everything behind is blurred out adjusting that focal length to 50 millimeters again hitting play and we've got an even more ambient scene created 
color corrections works the same way as everything you've ever looked at before in a color correction software. And if you haven't, well, it's so self-explanatory, I can talk you through this in a matter of seconds. Simply drag these sliders up and down until you're happy with the look and feel of the image. If you're looking for a desaturated black and white scene, toggle on saturation, drag and drop saturation to zero, and in two seconds, we have a beautiful black and white scene. If you want to look at the car in the background and not the car in the front in black and white, change that look at pointer, and now our scene is looking at the other car. Don't like that car? Toggle it off. Pick a new target. Let's hit this car black and white scene we're having an awesome camera angle on the tire the second you get sick of the black and white either pull up your saturation or detoggle and you're back to the original scene that we created anyway that's all for me team thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you want to try chaos envision for yourself there is a beta trial link down in the description below if you love the video and want to see more content like this smash the subscribe button and like always i'll see you next week